Hi everyone, it's Maz Ali here from TDS Productions. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about arguably my favourite lens as a wedding photographer. The 85mm focal length. Let's get straight to it. Right, so straight off the bat, this lens completely upped it again for me as a photographer, just being extra creative with it. And um, before I used to use a 70 to 200 for a similar kind of effect. However, this was something else. The 70 to 200 is lovely and it's still quite high in the ranks of my favorite lenses, just simply because of how versatile the lens is and the kind of result you can get out of it. The 85, however, is a prime alternative to it. When I say prime, I mean as in a prime lens. There's two types of lenses. So there's a zoom lens and a prime lens. A prime lens, you can't actually zoom in on, so you have to move forward and backwards yourself. And an 85 millimeter is a fixed focal length lens, and it is one of those primes. So you can't zoom in on it, um, but that has its advantages. It's got less moving parts inside it, which means it's sharper overall. And that is brilliant for when it goes to detail shots and portrait shots. And that's what this lens is truly made for, portrait photography and candid photography. It gives a closer kind of feel to the subject um, with little to no distortion whatsoever. Uh, you don't have to be too close to the subject either, so that's a kind of pro and a con to this. So if you're um, an introverted photographer, um, you can actually stay a bit back and get good quality photos with this lens. Um, yeah, so that's but then you need the space as well so if you haven't got the space to work with with this lens um, that could be an issue because you do need quite a large space to work with an 85 millimeter lens so here's an example of what i meant by needing a large space to take pictures with the 85 millimeter lens it's quite an extreme example because i'm outside and it's an open field this was at the Vale resort in cardiff um, however this lens is perfect to use indoors as well if you're looking for a candid kind of feel, a close-up kind of feel. Um, but yeah, this is an example that I found for you guys. I'll show some example images from this shoot later on in the video as well. Another thing this lens is brilliant at is capturing the natural emotions. It's, it's quite a good focal length because it's quite zoomed in and it captures every single focus point really well and it separates the subject from the background really well as well. So due to the shallow depth of field, um, this Sigma one's 1 1.4, so it's really shallow and um, for example, if you focus on the eye, everything else will be out of focus if you're at a wider aperture. Uh, we'll talk about apertures and ISO and shutter speed, the triangle, um, the exposure triangle later on in another video, but this one's a bit more focused towards the 85mm and how it captures that lovely. Coming on to ISO actually, you can use this at a very low ISO because of its aperture capabilities. It's just amazing at what it's capable of. It's a brilliant lens for decor shots as well, detail shots. It's it's brilliant for when you have the space to shoot with it and when you have the time to utilize it to its full capabilities. I'll show you some more decor shots later on in the video as well. However, it's not a perfect world, is it? This thing has a few cons to it as well, a few negative points that I think it's worth pointing out. It's not versatile at all. Um, it's quite a, a specialist focal length that you need to know what you're doing with it to make sure you get the quality that you you want from it. I mean, it takes a bit of a learning curve to get this correct. Um, again, as mentioned before, it needs a bit of space to be used anyways. So if you're in tight spaces, this isn't the best of lenses. And the last point, it does get heavy throughout the day. So if you keep using this quite rigorously throughout the day, which I do because on weddings you do take a lot of pictures so this lens does tend to get quite heavy this is highly recommended for anyone that's looking to do portrait photography but rent it out first or just look at the 70 to 200 for a more versatile option which there will be a review coming on later on as well if you're looking to get the 85 millimeter focal length for both video and photo don't get the sigma lens 
not recommended whatsoever simply because it doesn't have any image stabilization within it. The image quality out of this lens is brilliant. There's no doubt about that. However, video wise, you need stabilization because you don't want shaky footage at the end of the day. Unless you've got stabilization within the body that you're using, the camera body, don't get this lens. There's an alternative um, made by Canon themselves actually, the 1.4 LIS version. That is a brilliant lens as well. Um, similar to this image quality wise, I'd say. However, it has image stabilization, so that's a positive about that lens. Have a look at that if you're looking into video or if you're doing predominantly more video work. So look into that version of this lens. Another positive with the Sigma version is you get this bag. So it's quite nice. Uh, it's got a zip and this has done me really good. It's got good padding within the inside of the whole casing. The top, the bottom, the whole thing, um, the sides as well. They're really nicely padded so it keeps your investment safe essentially. When you're investing such high amounts of money into equipment, you need to look after it. And these little gestures from the company help a lot. And because of these little things, it makes you want to invest more into that company, more into their equipment as well. I'm going to show you some pictures I took for TDS Productions over the last year or so. And these were all taken by the Sigma 85mm lens and uh, Canon 5D Mark IV body. Uh, enjoy! Right guys, so we're here on my computer screen now. I'm just going to talk through these pictures, how they were taken. Just go through the images that were taken with the 85mm here. It gives you a better example. So this one was taken in Birmingham. It, as you can see, it's quite a low light situation. Hardly any natural light coming through. And there's a window towards the back over here, um, but yeah, this was a chandelier shot. As you can see, the ones towards the back have already started to blur out, although they're quite close to the ones at the front. That's what this lens is really good at doing, so the shallow depth of field is brilliant, and as you can see, the background is all already falling out of place. I don't believe this was taken at 1.4. Um, this was stopped down. This one over here is a brilliant example of how this lens is really good with the sharpness and um, the fallout between the sharp area and the bokeh area. It's really good how the sharpness is really... Let me just zoom in here, I'll show you. This is zoomed in a lot and it's showing a bit of chromatic aberration here, but apart from that, this picture's fine for as far as I'm concerned. Um, the background's really nice and the whole bokeh area is really soft and creamy as well. Moving on, here's a close-up shot, a detail shot. It's it's actually a natural shot. She's the bride was coming down the stairs at this point, um, so I was quite back at this point. But as you can see, um, it's quite zoomed in and it's already it's quite close. You just if you look at the perspective from this in focus point to the out of focus area, it's falling out really nice. This is a shot from my wedding. Um, <laughs> I had. To use this lens on my shoot as well. Um, these trees in the back were really far back. This was a lake at the back um, and the trees were on the other side but the compression with this lens made the trees look a lot closer than they actually were. This again um, is a great example of how the out of focus areas are so lovely. Like You can see the bride is in focus there and everything else is just completely blown out so the focus goes straight towards the bride. Going forward, this is using the lens outdoors and you can see how lovely the blur is. It's just brilliant the way it all falls out and the, the, the tension of the viewer goes directly towards the face which is in focus. Here's a bit more of how you can use this lens in a candid moment. This was the groom's speech and you can see how the bride, the bride was actually quite far back so he was on the dance floor here but she looks a lot closer than she actually was and the background's blurred which was really close to the bright that's again taking advantage of the shallow depth of field this picture was taken on the first shoot I ever did with this lens and I was completely blown away with what it was actually capable of the way it blurred the background for me it was astonishing because coming from a zoom background with not as much shallow depth of field it was brilliant the way it all came together. There's actually off camera lighting used here coming from the top left of this picture. 
Same with this one, the lights coming from the top left. As you can see, everything apart from the focal plane of the couple is out of focus. And you can see on the top as well, um, how the petals on the top, the, they're in focus and everything else is just blown up. The light, there's an off-camera light with a softbox used over here from the left-hand side of the image coming in. This was using advantage of the stage decorations. Here's a picture in natural light, so no off-camera lighting used here. And again, it just shows the way you can take advantage of the zoom and the blur facilities of the wide aperture lens. Moving on to this one. This one again was it's just using advantage of the background. This is natural light, so making sure the groom is in good light and just posing him however you think would look nice. That again is coming towards um, future videos where you're developing your own style. Do you want it more natural, more candid, or some of my couples want more posed stuff like this. This is a lovely picture how you can actually see, it's a great example of seeing how a wide aperture can actually be brilliant outside as well. And this one's completely opposite to the picture we saw before. This is a dramatic lighting effect with a softbox. I think there's two lights used here and we're balancing for the background as well which was quite hard because these lights were flickering so yeah this was really good as well. This was a nice shoot, it was quite a fun couple to work with. And again, quite a different example again. This was outside and this was natural light, no extra lighting used, um, just making sure the couple were in good light again. That's one thing you guys need to understand before taking pictures. You need to make sure your subject is in good light. As long as your subject is in good light, like this next picture as well, it looks much better than what it would if she had harsh shadows on her face, for example. Coming forward to this one, um, this is more looking at the detail picture side of things. This is again um, you, without any flash inside, so it was quite a dark room, but um, you don't have to go too high on the ISO due to um, the f-stop being so wide. Again with this one, this one is with an on-camera flash, so I had a speed light on top of my camera, and as you can see the blur is just brilliant, it just separates the centerpiece from the background. Over here, um, I focused on the ring to make sure that was sharp and that's the subject of this image. So the subject doesn't always have to be people. It can be certain elements as in um, this picture, it was the flower. Here, it's the ring. Um, over here, it's the ring. So that's something you need to bear in mind as well. When I say subject, it could mean anything, uh, whatever the main part of the image is. Moving on, this is with an off-camera light coming again from, I believe, the top left of this image. Uh, possibly two lights were used here. It's quite an old shoot, this one now, I can't remember. Again, you need to balance the background with the couple um, or with the bride in this situation to make it look as good as possible. Here, this is natural light, um, making sure everyone's in good light again, balancing for the background, editing for the front. And this was, again, a lovely picture for lovely couple. Here this is natural light again uh, making sure the background you need to balance for the background and the foreground or wherever the subject is just make sure everything is exposed for correctly and that way your pictures will look a lot more professional and how to do that is just finding the correct light and you get that with experience so it doesn't come to you straight away but it will eventually come to you and you'll know straight off the bat where the good light is and where you want to be to get the best picture and best angle. We saw a picture of this um, decor shot uh, above, so you can rewind to have a look at that again, of how we used off-camera lighting to make that couple stand out. But over here, um, this is just taking advantage of being close to a subject and blurring everything out, just making this stand out again. Just making sure the couple spend a lot of time and money choosing the correct decor company and correct theme for the wedding so make sure you capture that properly as well don't just rush through that again with this um, these little things may not mean too much to you as a photographer but to the couple they mean a lot they've spent obviously a lot of time looking into what would look nice with their theme with their decor just capture them properly this is taken with an 85 millimeter again as the other pictures as well 
and again it's just a good example on the top these are just small LED lights um, in the venue but we're making them look so much more prettier with um, the bokeh over here this is um, another example of how natural light can do you wonders when used properly this is just window light and an 85 millimeter showing its magic again with the blur you can go dramatic with this lens as well if you've got the space to play with it this is with an off-camera light um, with some special techniques we'll talk about later on uh, in the lighting videos and yeah this is a silhouette effect for this bride and groom that wanted a bit more dramatic kind of pictures so with TDS productions they offer more dramatic pictures and natural pictures depending on what the client wants so they vary their style which I love about that company as well coming over here this is with a strobe outside with uh, a softbox uh, with an octobox I believe this one this shoot was with and again we balance the background with the foreground looking lovely and then this was a lovely couple again to work with over here um, yeah I'm just confused if this was with the 70 to 200 or with the 85 that's the thing with these two lenses the effect is really similar however the 85 sometimes really stands out and in other situations the 70 to 200 is unbeatable it's just uh, unrivaled in that sense but again I looking at the fallout with, between the transition of the eyes and the flowers I, it's an 85 millimeter here so when you start using different lenses you'll understand how they affect the picture in different ways and that will affect your photography in many different ways as well making sure you look more professional in your pictures right so as you saw in those images the fall off between the sharp area and the soft area is just amazing the way everything just comes together so immaculately and so magically it's just amazing that's why this lens truly stands out in the thousands of options out there in lenses especially telephoto lenses there's a lot of options out there to choose from but the 85 millimeter lens is something a lot of photographers have chosen as their go-to telephoto lens when it comes to portrait photography and you could be the next one however this lens is not for beginners whatsoever you need to invest in maybe a 70 to 200 or a 50 mil or look at zoom options first learn photography learn what certain angles certain compositions will actually achieve in your pictures then start looking at how lenses will affect it as well you need to look at other factors as well it's not always the equipment that matters which is a cliche it's said a lot <laughs> i understand however you need to understand that as well um, it's a lot about what's up there, where your creativity is at, where, where your creative juices are flowing. You need to respect that and go out and shoot as many pictures as you can. And the 85mm lens isn't for that. It's a specialist lens. It's for certain shots. Um, if you know what you're doing with it, go for it. You're going to love it. If you don't know what you're doing with it, learn photography first. Because if you buy this lens straight off the bat, you're not going to enjoy it whatsoever. And it, it deserves to be enjoyed it's one of those lenses it's actually one of my latest lenses so I I'm a prime example of what I'm saying I learned photography first I learned what different angles compositions lighting techniques um, can do with my photos then I started looking at other lens options and investing in high-tech specialist gear such as the 85 millimeter it comes for around 1000 pound you can get it for around 900 to a thousand pound which is quite expensive when it comes to photography you need to look at cheaper options, cheaper alternatives for it. If you're using a crop sensor body, a 50mm lens is near enough to an 85mm focal length when you put it on a crop sensor. Um, that's a good option, that's a cheaper alternative to this. Um, there's downfalls for that, there's positives for that as well. We'll get into uh, comparing full frame and crop sensors later on as well. And There's a lot of videos lined up for you all to enjoy um, and learn quite a lot in this um, through this collection of videos as well. Right guys, so I'm signing off now. I hope this was helpful um, to learn a bit more about how the Sigma 85 millimeter lens or generally any 85 millimeter lens is a good option for photography when it comes to portraits and candid shots. I'm filming this outro on the 85 millimeter as well so you get a better idea of how this performs in video for um, when it's on a tripod. <laughs> Don't use it handheld, as mentioned before, no image stabilization. But there's a lot of positives to using this lens so make sure you look more into it before you buy it and yeah give it a try please subscribe to the channel 
give me some support like the video if you've got any questions direct message me on my instagram page which i'll link below and i'll definitely make a video for you guys on that so other people can take advantage of that knowledge as well all the best thanks for coming here until next time